Abe here, and I wanted to let you know that if you're able, you can upgrade your small beans skill over at patreon.com slash small beans. Here's why you should do that. If you pledge five measly beans a month, you get access to about half our podcasts that you don't get if you're just listening to the free feed. Shows include Star Trek The Next Futurama, Spiel Boys, Like Razor Blade Pie, and bonus episodes of I'll Show You Mine If You Show Me Yours. Not to mention bonus content, including info and updates on the movie we're making, Papa Bear. Hey, where's all the reasons to not subscribe to Patreon? I can't find them. Anyway, back to the show. You're about to hear the recorded audio diaries of Michael Swain, Adam Ganser, and Abe Epperson, transmitted to you from another dimension through the wonder of podcast technology. Lost in the multiverse, they have to dig into a different piece of multiversal fiction each episode in the hopes of finally discovering a way back to their reality. How do they know this isn't their reality? Because one of them is being a real asshole. Will our heroes ever make it home, or will they inadvertently explore our obsession with multiverses, alternate timelines, and parallel worlds, and tie it all into a conversation about postmodern art, pop culture, and what it means to be a human right now? This is Escape from the Multicurse. The X, dude. You're doing an X. It's not Z. I'm <laughs> cross you can't, I'm not going to Sending him my thought crosses. Is this the asshole bit that you're doing? Because I hate it. <laughs> no. No. Okay. no, cross thoughts are just a fact of the universe that I didn't make. Well, then I guess we don't know the deal and we'll just have to explore this universe like we do every month. Yeah, at least there's it. still X.com here. At least X is still a thing in this universe. You're taking Thank all the God. joy out of me right at the start of the podcast, man. I'm very upset about it. Thank God. Thank God it's here. But X, is Twitter going to be called X.com? Is yeah. that happening? I don't, oh, I don't, done, think, I don't think he owns that. You're I don't not think up he owns on this? It. It's a done deal. <laughs> I, I, he doesn't so even own the font that it's in. He stole that font. <laughs> it's well, I mean, so fonts good. are... Fonts, come fonts are fonts free. Go. <laughs> fonts, yeah. fonts are like seasons. They come yeah. in, a, in a hurry and leave before you know it. Who, uh, who, who knows who owns fonts? Here's nobody. One, here's couldn't one, Google it. Here's one spot that X marks. I got to get us on track. It's Escape uh, from the Multicurse. Specifically yeah. about 1993's oh. last action hero. We are your heroes. I'm Michael Swain. I'm Abe Epperson. Mm. I'm one of the other guys. And I'm the third guy, Adam Ganser. And there's aliens. That's <laughs> okay. So now you know when we recorded this. That's true. Those hearings are going on. It's oh yeah, we were recording. It's been, and it's, it's been factually verified by and at least three <laughs> men in suits. X dot com. I don't even think it's that many, isn't it? Just the one guy. No, it's so it's, far. It's I've only seen one guy. It's, it's one Grush, man who has, but he knows pilots who've seen things. He knows. He knows. And he, well, he, why would he yeah. make it up in front of Congress? Congress. No one's ever yeah. lied to Congress. They've seen um, no. what are they called non-human biologics. Mm -hmm. Pulled them um, out of these UAPs, bro. If you're saying UFO, <clears throat> get the fuck with it. It's UAPs. It's yeah. Well, uh, podcasts are already a disposable medium, but I feel like we're time stamping this one straight to shit. So let's mm. talk about Last Action Hero uh, yes, in the sir. first segment where we multi-map. It's the multi-map. Yeah, it's the multi-map. Okay. My energy will be on point now. I just legitimately never know what the name of the first segment is. I got you, baby. Thank you, thank you, Abers. This is where we talk about how the film in question, again, that's Last Action Hero, the Schwarzenegger vehicle, uh, uses the multiverse concept... And in our opinion, in, in any unique way, or is it run of the mill? Did it do nothing innovative? What's your schmear on that, Abe? Uh, you know, th thank you, Michael. Uh, <laughs> I think the, the multiverse rules here seem to be similar to like a Who Framed Roger Rabbit, right? There's imaginary beings that can live in our world, and there's like a portal of some kind. Now, obviously, Roger Rabbit is like a, you know, like there's an economy and a back and forth. This one is a magical uh, ticket, uh, a magical Houdini ticket mm -hmm. that apparently he's a real mage. So he could uh, go into fictional universes. So we see both fictional, uh, real people going into a fictional universe and Rolodexing those jokes, and then we get in the act three uh, a 
uh, a fictional person going back into the real world or multiple. Which is how you do that. That is correct, right? Yeah. Like, that that's is, how you, yeah. you got it. Yep. Yeah. Standard procedure. You got to do both ways because right. otherwise you're fun. not using all parts no. of the animal. Yeah, and I think that there's like, I don't know. I, I, de- I don't think it's entirely unique at this point, but I do think, uh, you know, like we've seen a lot of this protagonist realizing they're from a fictional world um and that's in a lot of uh, multiverse stories as well so I, I don't think it's unique but it definitely looking at like the fact that it's 1993 uh at the height of confidence of arnold schwarzenegger and blockbusters uh that aspect of meta-ness definitely makes it stand alone uh in terms of like the entire zeitgeist being looking at and seeing like oh wow yeah this is um this is a truly uh, like we meta is here now, you know? Right. And from John McTiernan, it must be said, who also directed Die Hard, which we've opined about recently uh, in the director piece theater about how uh, White House Down is a Die Hard, mm-hmm. how seminal it is. And I think there's a word for that, right? Yes, it's meta and postmodern in a way which is now old hat. Think uh, mm-hmm. Deadpool think you know these kinds of deconstructionist winking at camera we all know how the story goes things uh but in 1993 that was a relatively fresh take and it's being done by the people who pioneered the genre itself which is awesome it's like yes. getting spielberg to direct a spielberg spoof um so it is john mctiernan you know doing it which i think is 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 and shane black adam leff and zach penn the writers and of course schwarzenegger who is a legitimate <laughs> I mean, he comes off corny to me and stuff like The Running Man, but you know what I mean when I say yes, like you said, at the height of his legitimacy as a real action star, uh, he was willing to do this deconstruction as spoof of himself, and it is early enough that I think it's super seminal to stuff like Deadpool and other shit I'll mention, Um, but it also ties itself into that like storytelling legacy explicitly in a way that I thought was very exciting because I had never noticed the Hamlet references until this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll get into it more. Uh, My point being like there's heavy hitters behind the scenes. So there is some craftsmanship there. I do think it overlaps a lot with Roger Rabbit, especially in the sense that it's also an ode to Hollywood magic. Like for people who don't know general nutshell is little boy who loves Schwarzenegger movies. Magic ticket lets him go into a Schwarzenegger movie they foil an evil in his world and then our world aren't movies grand yet the kid mm-hmm. even breaks down at the end and cries and goes like you're all i ha- like movies are all i have since my dad right. died or whatever um so i do think it shares that with roger rabbit the, the, but the thing i think it does with the multiverse that's unique and that it does with postmodernism that is kind of unique is to not no longer unique but unique at the time to compare different storytelling forms and mediums uh interchangeably so like it it leans into and plays with i think even more because we're we understand now we're like we understand but because it's so early i it it leans really heavily into like can you believe it the story's talking about the story or like um (laughs) right can you feel how it's different that now you're in the real world and now you're in the so it is a peek behind the curtain and it's written by industry veterans and i think it's got that feel of shane black almost riffing and doing stand-up of like you know what's funny is behind the scenes are it's almost like a cracked article uh in almost an essayist way like a lot of the jokes will be in real life people don't look as pretty as in the movies right so running gag when they're in the movie world everyone's beautiful the lady who's the check stand person at the blockbuster is beautiful everyone's gorgeous and in like model Mm. clothing um it's like idiocracy in that way it's very like satirical and taking pointed shots at things by comparing the veneer of storytelling versus reality and roger rabbit didn't do that as much because we all already know that cartoons are fake um but we love to illuminate the fact that ah live action movies also fake the camera can lie is a popular you know thing to use the multiverse to discuss and i think this is one of those i loved i loved all that uh i i only had one quick observation you did uh it's not a bit it's a thing uh so this movie interestingly sets up a continuum of 
what you might call sort of like reflexive identities where each abstraction from what we'll call normal, which I think you still have to believe our world, not the movie world, our world is like the intersection of these axes of reality, each abstraction from it. So like the movie we're watching and then the movie in the movie we're watching is a heightened distance from what you might call reality and exposes, um, kind of like just various continuums of like, like for instance, I think in the action ver world, silliness is a thing that sort of came out the further away you get away from reality. Right? Like it's interesting to me that McTiernan believes the movie, uh, the action movie within an action movie is it includes cartoons, like actual cartoons. It's like are, silly are and childish. Yeah. Right. And ice right. cream, like yeah. milk trucks blow up and ice cream is a deadly weapon and stuff. And I think that, that's telling us like that in every direction, like every movie genre for the sake of argument would have a continuum where the further you get down the copy of a copy line, the more interesting truths about our reality would become abstracted, right? Like you'd see them in relief yeah. because like that's of so the... interesting to me that clearly if the Slater movies within this movie were real movies, literally at face value, right. they themselves would be comedy movies, right? Mm -hmm. Not legitimate action. Movies, exactly. Right? But, but mm -hmm. also they would be authentically action movies in some way. Like, uh, like they would, they would be distilling something that I think is purely true about action movies that you can't see because you're too close to the actual experience of the dimension over from you, if you will. Like, if you think of this dimension that we're in now as being, this is the place, right? Like, this mm -hmm. is normal. And the movie you're watching as being one dimension oh. over, it's harder for us to see the underlying silliness of that dimension. But the one over from that actually reveals it in more clearly relief. In, it's in clear a way relief. to draw into stark relief. It's almost like yes. snobs arguing about exactly. genres. It is to say, what is the distillation of action? Exactly. I'll tell you, dude, it's here's what it is. These elements. Yeah. And it's, it's fun to think of the multiverse because they all do this. All these movies do this. It's fun to think of them as, uh, like continuums or axes where other qualities get brought into relief by getting further and further away from, our reality. I think that's interesting. But all that said, the most important thing in the movie is the ticket, the golden ticket tech. Mm. That's probably something the government's been lying to us about. It's, they don't explain it. I think that's interesting. And I think that mm. I think it not being explained is a thing that we need to get, I don't know, a committee or something to look into. It's probably aliens. We know there yeah, are aliens. It's... They probably made that too. We need to look into well, this shit, you know? I mean, it is a it is a UAP, an unidentified annual pass. To right, or an unidentified world. awesome Ooh, portal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, like, can of we, course. Yeah, can yeah, we yeah, figure yeah. that That's shit what out? I, meant. I just misspoke, obviously, but yeah. Why yeah. shouldn't that be a thing? Who believes it isn't a thing anymore? They've been lying to us. We got to get to the bottom of it. The improv guy in me wants to resist your bit because that would be yes anding your bit, but I legitimately... <laughs> But I'm speaking truth. I'm spitting I, it at you. You are speaking truth that <laughs> I, I believe and agree with, so I'm not yeah. going to resist it. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. The <laughs> Thank truth you. won out instead of your comedy bits, and I appreciate that. Yeah. 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 And, more, we, and is, listen, is... I don't want to get into what John I... John McTiernan is an alien. Is an alien. I don't want to get into what I think it is, because I, I don't want to get into what I think it is, yeah. but I'm pretty sure that's not John McTiernan's skin. Right, I'm pretty or is sure. anyone with the MC prefix on their name? All bets are off, but alien, specific right. bets are on, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Some well, bets are on. Some bets are Some on. bets you are fucking on. Ones. You know the ones. I'm going to do it if Abe's not going to. It's time for the part where we talk about the film in more detail called Versus on Versus. Uh, yeah. I want to set it up by saying that as a postmodern exercise in form by veterans who are getting off on these are total awesome in jokes that the audience is finally sophisticated enough to for us to bank off of. Like these are all the foibles of our jobs and shit that we observe and want to put in. Uh, mm -hmm. It's I, I just need to note that like I, I've mentioned him several times with Shane black co-writer. And then also more importantly to me, there was a $1 million punch up pass by William Goldman to Round out the, the characters in this script. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. 
to do like depth. And I, that's so amazing to me because just having watched it with that in mind, I feel like I know both writers so well, I really can tell. Like, you know, the first line, this is a hell of a way to spend Christmas, Shane Black. And there's like specific yeah. jokes about the ex-wife where you're like, that's Shane Black. Um, but there's little bits where like Art Carney will stop and then right. for no reason go, my dad took me to the movies once. And I'm like, man, William Goldman William got a Golden. million dollars to write like four <laughs> little diddles about, you know, little, yeah, in my childhood, just I believed in something or family, yeah. child <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it's, it's kind of great. So my point is, it's like, it's an assembled thing by a team, but they're a team of pros. So it comes out good. I, I think they're thought. right. I think they're right that they needed it, though. I like I, I'm not I mean, like, far be it for me to diminish any screenwriter's salary of course but like i do think that it was good money like that was well spent money because this the story does need that emotional connection point for it not to get boring you know well, my like, hope and assumption is that goldman added the subplot where the character once they're in our world has an existential crisis about yeah, what it is that. to be a fictional character. Right. I, that's the, I cannot back any of this up, but that feels like the kind of thing where first draft, you'd just be all in on getting through the climax. And then you bring Goldman in and he's like, well, there's your humanity, right? It's the TNG of it all. When he's like, uh, I love this where he's like, oh, so because I'm fictional, like I try so hard oh. and I win these adventures and you just make my life harder and harder. Cause that's how action sequels work. He's like, everyone I love, you just kill off. And I yeah. just have to do a harder thing next time. I don't want to do this shit. It almost has iron giant vibes in a way that yeah. is very quick sympathy. Building. I hate it's the real great. world. Yeah. I hate it here. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be a stream. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, from um, the island mate. <laughs> the, yeah, mate. the joke bucket of like self-awareness is always fun uh, and it's a very easy way to make a movie feel humble which is I think what you were kind of alluding to before you know like you talked about it being seminal so there's like Tropic Thunder like Free Guy Cabin in the Woods Scream. like all these things that I think yeah, yeah where you that have a I character going like, this is how this movie works that we're in right now constantly right yeah. I think, and I think and Scream kind of won that title honestly like it, it wasn't the first but that's like I think the movie everyone thinks of as being it got very popular with that kid, of this. but the kid yeah. in this does the sh does yeah. that yeah he does the same thing <laughs> yeah. exactly I think now, though, when you fast forward to 2023 and we're kind of superhero movies are doing this in the last three years like crazy, I think we're getting regretfully close to like this fake humility because and I wanted to talk about like I think it's meant to take the wind out of the seriousness of the rest of the material, right? To the, the idea of like Last Action Hero is to make fun of blockbusters. Um, and to say, ah, oh, we take it so seriously, but really it's just, ah, it's just, we're a just bunch having of fun. fun. Yeah. 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 And that can be a genuine humility kind of thing. Um, the movie to some extent, this, should be noted did poorly commercially and a lot of people. I'm not surprised. Yeah. This flopped. Yeah. yeah. The yeah, audience flopped. was not down for mocking Schwarzenegger. It's, they wanted him to stay badass and T2 and you know, they wanted him to be that guy. Honestly, like there's so much people were like, Oh, that's a great idea. Uh, when they were to a lot of people talk about how it's like inside this movie, there's a great movie, but it just, they didn't get it. And I think it's because, I mean, it, we, we can get into that later, but there's a lot of aspects about like the if you're trying to do a joke and then you're trying to be serious, it's a very hard thing to do. You have to like really navigate it really well um, because it's hard to be serious and funny at the same time. And I think taking that seriousness, uh, taking the wind out of the sails of the seriousness uh, recently in multiverse films doesn't work for me as much. And I think the reason is because the self-awareness comes from all directions this one and like you mentioned a lot of william goldman stuff and you know like blazing saddles and you know like space balls a lot of scenes are odd couples where one person's like no this is the real this is the you know the 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 ordinary of my world and then someone's like that's not ordinary that's crazy you know like uh so you get that kind of back and forth from two people and i think now we have just been doing this thing where it's like everyone is in on the joke like we want everyone to be able to placate that you know itch of like 
being self-aware. And I think you kind of draw a line from this movie. You can kind of draw a line from like this movie and that impulse to like Guardians of the Galaxy or something like that. Like Drax being overly literal or that other character from that D&D movie that just came out. That's like basically the same thing. Yeah. And it's like it's fun comic relief when deployed well. But when we get a ton of characters in a movie who are breaking fourth walls, it becomes pretty rough. It's funny. I mean, there's smaller movies like coherence or what have you but when the when right. a blockbuster movie is about multi dimensions in some sense it's impossible task that it's trying to achieve is to make very niche specific obscure fan servicey in jokes that are yeah. that are so broad everyone gets them they're four quadrant it, right, that's <laughs> very <laughs> difficult to well, right i think one you have everyone that's serving special two feeling. masters one interesting yeah. artifact of this movie is i think everything abe's listing is residue from this on our pop culture. Like it's become pretty right. boilerplate for fourth wall meta jokes to be at least a few of them in any blockbuster. And I don't know exactly when that started, but I think this movie in part put that expectation in our culture. Yeah. You know, yeah like, and I, I mean, I speaking of artifacts and residue, there were some things you found glowing in your yard last night that you dude, wanted to present. Oh my God, man. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, first of all, You're doing the bit. For I'm not in the, well, no, it's not a bit, dude. Are you up to on the news? This happened in Congress. Uh, no. I just okay. think it's such important news. Abe, it's really it's important. Like also, real quick, Bridget Nielsen totally. Bridget Wilson totally an alien. Um, I'll tell you why. There's no way that a woman that age would kiss a 12 year old several times and still think he was hot and nobody correct it. That's just alien licensure. That's got to be what it is. No other that, explanation. Yeah. Right. Anyone different is an alien is what you're saying. I'm sorry. Do you Can think anyone... a woman would kiss a 12 year old in a normal world? No fucking chance. Like, like there's I'm no way alien. that would be in a movie. Why would it be in the movie? It's insane. <laughs> Aliens, the only explanation. And now we know it all adds it's up. It's definitely a weird thing from the 90s. In That wasn't in the hearings, but it could have been if we'd gotten mm-hmm. another hour like we'd all petitioned for and they didn't. Congress didn't give us. All right. All anyway, right, sorry. All right, all right, all right. I don't want to get political about it, but you get it. We, like, have you guys seen that new Flash movie? No, because I'm uh, yeah, still trying to get back into my wallet so I can buy the NFT. But no, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. Because like they have like Batman and Superman, Superwoman, and like there's multiple flashes. Yeah, and all these iterations will kind of point out. Oh, that's weird. I never thought about how like Batman is just a big crazy guy who lives in a cave of bats. That's so mm-hmm. weird. And it's just like this is so much more elegant. Not only from a framework device of you have two very like you have the odd coupled scenario that dynamic which i mentioned but also it's a part of the we got to get back home that's why we're kind of finding out like oh we got to go do like in in act 3 they're like we got to we got to save jack f- from dying by getting him back into the movie world because in so movie he world heal. the hero has plot armor right it's, right. The it's right. plot observation that, it's, that was very plot clever functional yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so you're, and, and I think Roger Rabbit does a little bit of that too. You know, like we, we decide when plot wise that he kind of turns on that he's a tune. And then there are the times he's emoting about like, oh, woe is me. I don't want to be a tune. Yeah. I don't don't want to be a tune or Jessica's going to leave me. And I'm just like a normal human with normal human problems and emotions. And it's just like you turn it on and then it's just like, oh, also, I yeah. can't die. And they do uh, and- thoroughly innovative pop culture or I'm sorry, uh, postmodern stuff like like I was surprised the level of sophistication they expected in the sense that there's a part where the kids thinking about Hamlet and watching Slater. So that's enough justification for us to watch a an SNL sketch, essentially, that's like, what if an action hero was Hamlet? Yeah, I thought like that- they just cut to a sketch. It's so interesting that how far they I guess I'll just say. They were trying shit. Like, I admire how much shit they're trying here. I think, like, at just the 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 abstractionist in me also, f- I found that interesting for ha- the implication that it that there are multiple universes being created in this universe. Like, and the I'm, seeming claim that they are in the legacy of Shakespeare and that Hamlet was an action movie. I think that's an interesting way to look at Hamlet. 100%. Right. I think that the movie is sort of subtly claiming all art is like a part of this lineage in some way. Like all performative arts are a part of the lineage of it. We've but always they, been aware it's a play within a play and it's all about having fun. Yeah. Right. But, I, but like yeah. more importantly, I think, is that this kid 
is able to create fused realities that exist without motivations like even movie motivations like you just said normally in a movie you'd have the scene where he wakes up from that dream or whatever right or it fades to white and you right. go, oh, he's imagining you don't <laughs> even have they that. just do it no, it just, just happens it. and like it, which means we don't really have any reason to think it doesn't exist in exactly this world. one time only he looks at camera and goes like that chick that just did that was hot man and then you're like okay and he never right. does that again it's fine hubba, hubba. right you know you get exactly. it they seem to say exactly i just i love yeah. all of the i love all of these like quote unquote subtleties of the rambunctiousness of the fictional world like there's that shot of they're just driving away from the fr- the initial like car chase that he like stumbles in and it's not like a blink if you'll miss it. You definitely notice, but like in the way background, the car that like completely gets launched into the air higher than any car that you've yeah, ever seen. Right. It's great. And just like that kind of stuff, it's just like peppering that and making it feel subtle is such a great way to install in the audience, in my mind, like, oh, this reality is, we're going to have fun with this reality. It yeah. is a cartoon, like you mentioned before. And we don't have that in no, like recent multiverse rules. Like we kind of get it with Free Guy, um, yeah. You know, like well, I know like there's a little bit of it, but even then, it's like no, it's all very serious. The like it's life or death, which this has too, but it like doesn't feel free to just like have fun with it and build a wider world with it, just to allow you to be you know, to, to live inside last action heroes, like nonsense. And you don't even think, so the next time that they do something meta, you're not like, Oh, I forgot that this movie does that too. It's just, it feels right. I think it actually does have the most directly in common with free guy in recent memory. It's pretty much that same Rolodex or that same like setup. Um, and you I mentioned and I will say I think Ryan Reynolds is like yeah. kind of the guy we decided. Right, right. True. Yeah. Is our rye postmodern observer deconstructionist dude. I, I right. also think because he's just so cool. He's over everything. <laughs> uh, I also think there's a movie that does do it. I'm thinking of living inside a burning house that I harp on a lot because I love it. But um, also features Tom Noonan as a character and himself. Synecdoche, hey, New York. What a fun. weird yeah. connect. Tom Noonan is in this as Tom himself. Noonan yeah, anyway. is a meta He's movie. The Ripper. Yeah. I also appreciated. Yeah, I appreciated McTiernan occasionally making bad shots. For like to imitate the style of movies he's done better, yeah, like overtly yeah. wide or fake. Well, like yeah. so, my I think my favorite shot in the movie is when they're back in the real world. I'll put that in quotes. Uh, and Arnold is doing uh like he's gonna play chicken with a cab, right? And they like run into each other, and we do a thing that's super not action movie, which is the camera just stops and stays with the kid. And you just see this car wreck happen in real time from like out of focus, like, you know, I don't know, 50 yards away, a hundred yards away. And it feels very yeah. upsetting and realistic. And mm. it makes you think back on like all these really clunky cuts that were created for the car chase scenes or like when people are like jumping over camera and stuff. And you're like, oh, yeah, McTiernan's a fucking awesome director. Like all these bad oh, yeah. shots are there on purpose because he wants to create that 80s effect that we all think of in action movies that he actually doesn't do. He doesn't make movies mm-hmm. like that. Uh, because he knows how to make the spectacular and the mundane. Yeah. He understands what separates the two. It's a really deft exercise in his smart. talent. Uh, he, he, it really is. Uh, it's a talent that's actually difficult to attribute to a human being. Uh, like It's hard to imagine a human being being able to adopt two entirely different styles and worldviews like that and incorporate them uh, into one work of art. You know? Uh, really? You get what I'm getting at. Um that you that you'd have to be an alien. I just can he show saying. us his skin? I would like to see yeah. what his skin is. I'm sure it's blue based on um, my notes. Yeah, 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 we yeah, have yeah, to keep yeah. reminding you of your bit, so I feel like you're not giving it. You're not. You're not <laughs> no reminding visual. me of my bit because I'm not doing a bit. I am oh, telling right, I'm you. Sorry, I forgot. I was things that are happening episode. in the world. I am I blowing the whistle. Thing. Thank you. This fucking show, man. In this world, <laughs> isn't the it great? Aliens can win. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm happy to spend another 30 minutes on the hero, Mr. Graves, <laughs> uh, Ryan Graves, former Navy commander, <laughs> but I don't want to ruin Last Action Hero. You know, I'm polite. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Leave some yeah. for the end. Wait till yeah. everyone can digest it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I th- so there's something we mentioned a few times about like this movie and metaverse movies interaction. Uh I wouldn't call it like a parasocial kind of deal because that's not exactly it. Cause that's like one-to-one kind of interaction, but like the concept of fandom and what these movies mean and how they're doing fan service versus like the kind of wry, uh, kind of, um, you know, uh, dismissive jokes that they make about fandom in this movie kind of, is an interesting polarization because it made me realize that more and more with multiverse sport uh, stories like your Marvels and your space jams and basically what last action here is mocking here is kind of coming from a place of it's silly to be a fan of these things really? by the makers of the thing. I do homo- like the it's, whole core of the message is the kid that scene at the end where he goes like, I don't have a dad and you've meant so much to me in my life. I love you. I don't like, think the movie despises fandom, right. but it's definitely not just fan service. They're not, I not mean, it is Arnold's dick, like legacy. Yeah. Dick. <laughs> yeah. I think that the absurdity, the whole thing comes from how seductive fandom can kind of be. Uh, I think that they, the reason that these movies do like let's roll X, all the elements of a brand to maximize like this fan interaction is like a pretty, smart but also seemingly kind of um i don't know that seems kind of uh like a snake that seems you kind think of, it's cynical but i don't think they it's, think it's cynical i don't know if they think it's cynical it would be I think if there's it was a lot of cynicism and shane black's shane black's writing is kind of like always kind of biting the hand that feeds um yeah, that's true and they built a fictional fandom in this movie and they're like yeah it's just for children but because your main protagonist is a child, that's fine. The right. Jack Slater movies are for children. That's fine. They can be dumb. It's like that um, beginning of well, Tropic it Thunder, to which Tunes. I mentioned. Like you know, they sh- they pan over to Looney Tunes. I, I do think that's As a gutsy say, like, action choice. movies are like Looney Tunes, which I'm like, right. I don't know. Uh, would you know, blah blah action movie? Like, would Collateral agree with that? I doubt it. I do Go think ahead. that's a gutsy choice, though. Collateral. I really do because like I agree with Abe in so far as I think pointing out the inherent silliness it, that exists in action movies and it does uh, is right. risky because you might alienate the people like who are not children going right. to watch this movie and don't want to joke about it. Well, they want they, they don't want the 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 mask of reality taken off, much like most of us in America right. who are not willing to see that we've been lied <laughs> to for decades by our government. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, yeah, they yeah, don't want to see no. it dissected, much like the biologics, biologics, who yes, that are alluded to, though not alive. seen, and he didn't say he saw it, if you will. He didn't say he saw um, it, but are alluded to by uh, national hero Ryan Graves. Yeah. Yeah, and it hits all the Dan Harmon good structural posts, completely ignoring our <laughs> that what you just said. Um, <laughs> you know, in the sense that uh, you mentioned the chicken later, the kid does chicken. Like, he explicitly says, My arc in this movie is that I'm going to learn to be brave. He plays chicken right. on a bike against the car. You're like, that's as brave as you can get. And then he bails so hard that it makes him do an ET across the face of it the does, moon. He does an ET. That so yeah, good. that's the thing I want to so mention. So I, I because, just want to mention, like, yeah. it's it feels perennially, I think they tried to earn their ability to joke by flexing yeah. nuts on being well-crafted and being like, believe me, this is a team of people who could write a straight action movie. Of course we could like, listen to the Schwarzenegger one liners. You want to be a farmer? Here's a couple of acres. That's one of the best yeah. Schwarzenegger one liners of all time. So have we not earned yeah. the right to now make fun of our own thing that we built? They seem to say, right. Yeah. And it's all, yeah. And it's also has the, you know, the fact that it's Arnold doing yeah. those things. So you just kind of run with it. So it feels fun. And dude, I, can I, anyone well, deny, no offense to the man, but if someone's like, Arnold, it's kind of inherently goofy and funny. Yeah, no And no he kind of knows dude. that. Of course. Yeah, he, he kind of knows, knows that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, that's the whole, like, I, I mean, the fact that they include the Stallone uh, source of <laughs> yeah. rivalry yeah. in the movie is like, that's inside baseball that you have to be like, in order to truly enjoy that joke, you have to be a real big fan of right. all of this stuff, right? I love how they yeah, almost too, recreate so the Hans Gruber falling off the building diehard sequence, but with a little kid. They should right. have gone further and done it like exactly. Like I wanted exactly. to see the kid slowly yeah. fall. Actually, I wonder what uh, McTiernan Also very about antichristy, that. black and white, watching your kid fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It's right. occurring to me, actually, as you're saying this for the first time, 
we do want to put like our A list talent into these movies that have high concept multiverse. Potential. It's the most fun iteration of that because right. you get to. It makes it feel like oh, it's the thing commenting on itself as opposed to. You know, just a bunch of yuck yucks it commenting might be, on, the, on the thing. It might also be that if it was being done by people who weren't John McTiernan and Arnold Schwarzenegger, it wouldn't feel like it was legitimate. Like it would feel like people who wanted to be it included. It would feel mocking. Yeah. yeah. It, would be fan, it would be a fan film. Right. Which we wouldn't take seriously as an actual artistic statement. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, I don't think that that's a fair, I don't think that's fair. I think truth can no, come from any source. No, but I do source. think it was strategic and I yeah. think it was important that it was these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think that that's what it gives it the ability to, like it, 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 it kind of has to stand on that merit. Otherwise it all kind of falls apart to also be a blockbuster movie that exists. You know, it has to check all those boxes yeah. first. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. we should, I think that's, it's good to demand that our A-list talent make the bolder statements in cinema. I think that's part of why we're excited about Barbie and Oppenheimer is that those are two movies where that's happening. You know, I mean, we had Obama true. on between two ferns. Like I know there's right. some people who aren't cause everything's individual, but I think we've reached that point. Everyone is humble. Like it's, it's, right. it's passe to not be humble enough to go on between two ferns. Like you want right. to do that. You've seen as weird. I feel like yeah. the only, yeah. you want to be a likable a humor dummy. yourself no matter how big you are. And I feel like the only right. frontier we haven't crossed is having president Obama finally admit the decades <laughs> of cover up that have happened about you UAPs. could open your mouth and do it. Barack, like you could just, you could change the just world. Like open, instead of your summer playlist, true. how about yeah. you just tell us the truth about aliens? A thing we all and know. If they're trying to l block you, dude. You wait until you're doing your March Madness brackets and you just start writing. And you just aliens leak it on there. Real. Aliens are yeah. real. Aliens yeah. are real. Over just start writing over. coordinates. I'll show up there. Show Write a coordinate. I'll be there. Yeah, I don't want to read your book list. I just want to read Aliens yeah. Are Real Science. It's neat Barack that you're Obama. aware of, you know, and then insert cool band here. Uh, mm -hmm. But it'd be more neat if you'd make the us aware potatoes. of the cool aliens that exist. And they would be cool. Yeah. They are advanced life forms. Well, he's probably never going to admit it because he himself is a reptile. <laughs> right? A reptilian. Oh, yeah, there yeah. probably he's are reptilian. reptilian There's probably reptilian. That's so, my theory about mm. why Benedict, look at me bringing us back. That's why the villain yeah. Benedict wears those little I'm eye so pieces, proud. right? So he can see who's a reptilian. So you can see. Like they live yeah. style. Yeah. Was there like a scene where style. it looked like he had a normal eye? Like when he took uh, the eye out and it was like, oh, he has a normal eye. And yeah. then these are, yeah, he, he is, chooses he had, what to put on for the day. Yeah. Yeah. He had like a whole eye tree. I got the but, but underneath, eye. Like a bunch of spoons. I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you. But underneath the eye that he's using with all the different functionalities, it seemed like he also mm -hmm. had a normal eye. Like he had two no, normal eyes. No, I think eyes. they're just contact lenses, aren't they? Just contacts? They're that's uh, a, their eyes. Yeah, that's their a eyes. fucked up because, contact lens. Okay. Because there's a there's a bomb. Uh, like the whole, that's the right. Whole that's point right. The bomb you rotate. They, Which, by the he way, like threw his eye on the ground. That explosion hard cuts to my favorite joke in the entire movie. So I got to read this right. line, which is the final beat of the chief angrily yelling at them till the steam shoots out his ears. And in right. this scene, he yells, I got the California raisins doing an all male review of the diarrhea and Frank and fuzzy slippers, tiny Tim's tiptoeing through the tulips. You ball peen Jack Aminas. I slurped about all the cock sucking toast I can take from you. And he goes, what? <laughs> it's, it's what? A good bit. I didn't catch that. <laughs> yeah. like, what? Why? Why are you talking? Love the chief. Uh, oh my god, he was great. Yeah, the chief is fantastic. Yeah. And in, like, also, once again, not. It's not seminal in any of these pieces, you know. Like, Mel Brooks has no, been doing it's, this it's for low years. It's fruit jokes. Yeah, you know, at this of point. Acres. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, I mean, yeah. one of the climactic jokes is that there's a gas bomb inside a mobster known as Leo the Fart that you arm. Yeah, by incredible. His finger. Leo, right. It's like fart. scary movie status at certain. Yeah, points. and they yeah. constantly refer to him as just the fart. <laughs> yeah, the fart. <laughs> Silent but deadly. <laughs> I like um, oh, great. against practice uh, the guy who plays Salieri, <laughs> and it, yeah. Yeah. that's a good inside. F. Murray meta Abraham, yeah, John they just constantly yeah, yeah, yeah. referring to F. Murray Abraham as Salieri. Yeah, that kid said he knew you and you killed Mozart. Who Zart Mozart. <laughs> Mozart? I don't know. I kill a lot of people. I can't remember half of them. I can't remember <laughs> now. Good, yeah. Dude. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> solid. It's a solid. Joke also, one of the most poignant. Yeah. It's almost like a Homer, 
Homer's deep and beautiful moment is when Arnold hears classical music and like tears come to his eyes. Like that doesn't, right. I guess classical music He's does like, not exist in I Slater's universe. Right. Well, he doesn't know Mozart. Yeah. So yeah, he it, only clearly, knows the heavy metal reason. of Megadeth and uh, <laughs> right, Jerry and Cantrell. Be, yeah. <laughs> it was unreal. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard of Megadeth I mean, in far world. too long. It was a, that was a real thrill. Oh, this is a banger <laughs> yeah. of a OST, dude. It's got ACDC on it. It fucking you know who and chains could sweep the earth with Megadeth at any time they choose, but they don't because they're waiting to see how we will use. If they were gonna technology. hurt us, they would have already <laughs> right. done it. It would be done. It's dude. time for us to stop living in fear and start living in the truth. Speaking of death, is death still walking oh, yeah. around at the end? Sir Ian McKellen. That was yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Does he stay in the real world, wandering around, <laughs> just killing people? Because well, he can just touch them, and seconds later they die. In spite of humility, it is notable that they wrote into their movie. Hey, our, our weird deconstruction of action, the action genre, it's kind of visionary. It's kind of like Hamlet. It's kind of like Bergman. <laughs> like, they are kind of, you know, lauding their That own is, thing. like, the most McTiernan yeah. thing in the world. Like, he he's making, like, f- French New Wave, like, Godard contempt references in this mm-hmm. movie. It's like, it's, of course, of course, McTiernan's going to want that shit in there. And, but it also he loves, might be, he loves but it, it also might be like legitimately evening out movies. You know, like I, like I feel yeah. like in some ways I th- he also wants to drag down prestige movies. Like he might even consider this a prestige movie in the sense that like, I think yeah. he thinks he's making an important content, a comment. And that that and that therefore it belongs with movies like the Seven. That's what I mean. Is more. I think so. It's more pointed than Roger Rabbit. It's not yeah. only having fun. They think they have a few points, and they. I, it's whatever. The points are fine. They're not bad. But like, <laughs> right. they think yeah. they're doing a little bit of satire. Uh, you get that vibe. Especially well, they, with yeah, the they, stuff they, where like Shriver says, "Don't plug the restaurants," and he says, "In this movie, we only kill forty-eight people." Like he's willing or, to literally take digs at his own image uh right? charles dance firing the gun in the middle of new york and like no one no gives sirens a shit. yeah like no one gives a shit oh the real world is a place for villains like that kind of idea of gun violence being portrayed in that way isn't like that's a legitimate satirical nod well, from a blockbuster movie and psychologically they interesting in part. the sense that the core thing about an action movie that gives us hope is an action movie is almost defined by going in knowing that even if they pay the ultimate cost, the hero will win. Like the bad guy will be stopped. Otherwise, it's not really action. It's more of a drama or a tragedy, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're going to see triumph. You're going to see success against unlikely odds. That's what you want. And that is uplifting and important. Like I see it successfully made me go, yeah, action movies are great. They make us all feel the thrill of we can do it. Right. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. It's. I keep coming back to the like the so the referential stuff because it's a good point to say like to balance out movies to say like for every you know for every reference to E.T. or to you know like some bombastic blockbuster you also have an eight and a half reference or an Igmar Bergman reference but what's interesting is they also go out of their way with that satire up front there's a scene where i think you mentioned this right before the hamlet kind of you know not, to be or not to be right. not to be yeah <laughs> uh they the teacher who by the way was played uh played by the wife of lawrence of Le- lawrence olivier uh and is like you might recognize him from Zeus and clash of the titans or from the polaroid commercial you know not his you know, storied career. Right. Uh, and then it, then to turn Hamlet into an action movie. I really do wonder, like, I know it isn't trying to say like Phantom is stupid or we're getting, it's like these kids don't understand Lawrence Olivier. Like that's not what the movie's saying, but it is kind of saying that like there is a little bit old man energy in hmm. this. I read it as movie. them just saying we're the modern version of this legacy. Yeah, but why frame it in a way that is like 
the society kids, aren't clued kids in. wouldn't know so why are we showing hmm. that maybe yeah. i mean that, i don't know I think that I think they're saying trying to say something a little bit there. So this so this movie does get into some interesting like little satirical, you know, references here and there. Some of them I think are more on theme and some of them aren't. And uh, cynical. Just, yeah, they are those yeah. are Shane Black esque insights. Right. <laughs> I think right. they're maybe accidentally, but certainly certainly making the point that over time art tends to blend into other art from similar like like totally and also that we contextualize other art through the lens of the art we're consuming now right so like hamlet is more accessible to this kid and therefore i think to a lot of moviegoers in this day and age through the lens of parody in an action film right same with mm-hmm. seventh seal a movie that i would wager 90 percent of the people who saw at last action hero have not seen seventh Seal, yeah. right yeah. which it's so like in a way the fact that the Jackie Slater character is a gateway to art that we would have said was important shows, I guess how, like how reality kind of telescopes the further away from ground zero you get. I mean, that comes back to the thing mm. I was saying earlier, you know, that, uh, so take out your telescopes and watch the sky. <laughs> so right. Speaking the of sky. telescopes and becoming paste, <laughs> uh, you might want to check into the hearings that happened this afternoon and which facts were said. Uh, no, but for real, like, uh, I, I do think that, I don't know that they're saying it on purpose, but I do think it's an interesting artifact of what they said that Hamlet increasingly is going to get viewed through the meta, the meta lens of, action movies and other stuff we're consuming now, right? Because that's the primary basis through which we feel art, yeah. you know, is the, is the cinema. Ma is uh, our context, which is the present. Right. And I don't know if I think that's bad or good. Uh, I like Hamlet a lot the way it yeah. was. <laughs> I don't like this version very much, <laughs> but it's also a fact. So yeah. I mean, Speaking of facts, I got to say, yeah. according to IMDb Trivia, it is a fact, irrefutable fact, that this movie is a favorite film of two very special people. Stanley Kubrick really likes this that movie. That makes sense. Likes this movie. Yeah. And then yeah. Robin from the Howard Stern show really liked this movie. Oh, wow. <laughs> Rarified. What a, it. what a collection. Mm-hmm. What an IMDb Love trivia. It. Yeah. Uh, I like to think they saw it together on a, you know, like a meet yeah. that didn't pan out, but that didn't yeah. pan out. But they both liked yeah, the yeah. movie. Yeah. Kubrick's like, I'm not getting divorced again. Let's do another take. <laughs> That's right. Uh, 100%. Uh, I'm real. ready to hop. Th- I just have like little cracked observations, if that's okay. Yeah, sure, if we're at that, some. if we're near the back end of this I think segment, so. okay. Uh, because I and I think it's f- more fitting than usual because I swear, once he comes into the real world, right, then it is literally like a cracked article. It because it's every situation mm-hmm. they encounter is Arnold going, "Wait, the real world doesn't look like this." No, in an action movie, you can't actually punch through a window. Oh, you know that's cracked shit. So there were some that I think are notable or clever, um, or that I took issue with like there's one point where Slater explains that uh, Benedict is going to try and kill Arnold because that will make Slater stop existing. And that doesn't make any sense to me based on the rules they've set up yet. The hero and villain both deduce it simultaneously and are correct. Like that is true. That is true. I don't know how they knew that, especially when later someone says, I'm going to make King Benedict is like, I'm going to make King Kong come out of the thing. And you're like, well, surely the real monkey, there's no King real Kong, King right, Kong. Is dead or doesn't exist. Yeah. It's an artifact from the movie. The magic is coming from the movie. So yeah. it's already been recorded. Arnold is already so given on, his Houdini. likeness. What's the deal? Yeah. <laughs> can, you imagine, can you imagine the kind of, uh, like revolution in medicine that being able to jump into that movie world would be. Oh, you just get Dr. For Quinn l- out of the movie world and you're set. It, it, that's another one. Right, exactly. Like this portal tech is more important than these UAPs, I would say, for human thriving. Oh, right. Uh, and it throws like faith in Oh, yeah. It's a huge, huge thing. It's a yeah. huge, it's a huge question, tech. It's a really huge tech. Also, honestly, if they have these ships from these aliens, and we know that they do, why can't I drive one? I'm a taxpayer, and I think <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. my turn. Anyway. Uh, thanks, Obama. Also, <laughs> yeah. My f- 
I think my final thing is just the observation that at the end, when everything is set to right, and he's now a sentient character back in his movie, sort of like Wreck-It Ralph back home in his game, right? We've come full circle, but we've changed. The movie becomes the character Jack Slater running into a room and saying to all the other characters, stop shouting. You don't understand. We're characters yeah. in a movie. We're fictional. <laughs> like these movies suck. Now this kid ruined this franchise because this yeah, has no plot over. or structure, right? It's just no. now people standing it's, around talking in the, through the fourth wall about what movies are. I just think it's really funny strange. that in the future movies won't work in, in the, in the real world in this movie. He's it's really ruined, strange yeah. that that he accepts the idea that he's fictional. Like just because he's you're Moriarty in a movie, from TNG, yeah. But but yeah. like but what is fictional? Fictional isn't a thing now. You know what I mean? Like the, like that label. Stop. We're not real, but they are. Why does he accept? That? He has an inner well, life I mean, and desires and memories. It's yeah. the same yeah. thing as like clones. You know, like you why still should a clone know. accept that they're not real? No, no. It's about the accepting prestige. that you're a clone. Uh, they're a still a fictional person. Doesn't mean that they're not like. But the important. underlying argument there is Nyla. kind of that we're less real than these people. Uh, yeah, but I mean, That's it's like weird. They claim that he accepts that Tyrone. I mean, I think he just. Ex- I think he accepts that he was created and not like man. He was created in a. In the brain of a uh, writer. Although if I were but him, it still means he's a that's, person. I would that's ask why the kid. So... You came into my world. How do you know that my physics and yeah, why am I is not less primal? Real. Exactly. Why maybe you're the fake world, bro. And that's the movies why let you see the real world, bitch. It's so interesting that he, <laughs> oh, when he, sees, he does when he sees himself in the real world. He has one line for him, and it's "You've caused me nothing but pain." <laughs> it's really right. tragic. Yeah. It's, it's great. like it's it's great. Great. Bro. that to Arnold as himself. <laughs> Yeah, really like what a fascinating <laughs> thing for the character to say. And Arnold says, "Hey, no pain, well, no gain, <laughs> no <laughs> problem." <laughs> yeah, it's true. We need less acceptance of the narrative that's been put forward by society and the structures that we live in, and to question more. Uh, yeah. I think that's the moral. Last action hero has been trying to tell us for multiple decades. Thank you. Ask the big questions. Yeah, that's the big. Well, he's coming up on stage. Questions. He's coming for the camera. He's coming at the gym. He comes when he pumps. He's coming all the time. I love to it's come. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> uh, let's move into our final segment where we just give some wrap up thoughts. If anyone has any like pleas or arguments they want to make. And then we decide whether we're going to move on or stick it out like a dead mobster full of gas in the La Brea tar pits. We're closing the Woo. wormhole. Closing the wormhole. Yeah. Or That's not, because the I segment tar, also involves an option where you leave the wormhole open. Terrible name. Tar, tar has different physics in that world. Like, tar is too viscous. More yeah. terrifying. More terrifying. It, the idea that it could contain an explosion of VX gas. Right, right, like, right. It's, also, what I love, is it made of? It's not resolved. That gas is still down there. It's, it's just still in there. there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I mean. But That's just how tar. It was a good work, joke baby. that the tar wipes cleanly off him easily, and the kid's like, "I love that." Yeah, joke. that ain't real. Yeah. Like that doesn't happen in the real world with tar. You know, it sticks to most people. Yeah. and then it cuts to the second shot, and his like clothes are now clean as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just like they double down on just the fact that we cut around, and then suddenly it works out for you know it works out for Arnold. Yeah, uh, it's great. Well, let's talk about this wormhole that we got in front of us mm-hmm. that we're staring at. Mm. And it may have always been reality. there. Who knows? It may have what always been What if they're not there. aliens? What if they're interdimensional travelers, Adam? Are you open Ooh, to that? Yeah. I mean, that's still an alien. I'm not here to define what an alien is. I'm just here to allow to ask them, please let me drive their ship. I feel like I'd be very good at it. All we can say for sure is they're non-human biologicals. Yeah. And when I say all we, I mean all mm-hmm. uh, the whistleblowers in Congress who know enough mm-hmm. for me to believe them. Right. All right, That's so here's the rules. <laughs> we we can combine the universes, stay in the Last Action Hero universe, which I guess involves the option of either, oh, so be in a universe where action movies have invaded the real world, mm. or, you know, stick with our standard universe. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and 
close the portal and live in the last action hero universe. I feel like I'm the most adventurous of us with the movie universes, but I would go for it because again, plot armor, lots of like options for functional immortality yeah. and there, I could theoretically hang out with Danny DeVito as a cartoon cat. Cartoon. That, oh, that cat would be DeVito. my explicit goal is to befriend Danny Doing DeVito. cocaine. Yeah. Cat Talking DeVito. about it, he's like, you always got my fur. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I would just like work like... on him. I'd be like, you got to leave the force, man. Let's just be a cat and a guy and go hang out. Yeah. It's yeah. just like fucking, you know, open a patty's pub. and loathing and this shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a little concerned you'd end up having to be a cop in that world, though. You know what yeah, I mean? like, you would have a, to that's have a, a job that would. Although here's the thing: the movie thing, world's is that... the only place where cops are good. They're good. They're Everything is good. that's true. Any jobs? Yeah, any job is game. You can even because of the meta ness, you could be a filmmaker in the filmmaker world if you wanted mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. You know, they got they got that too. I'm gonna. I'm. I agree. I agree with Michael. I'm gonna. Uh, <gasps> I would live in this situation wow. because I think it also adds a whole new species of people. That if we deny, that's like genocide. <laughs> that's like a genocide of fictional people, and I don't want that. I want them to live amongst us. That's I right. agree. And, uh, Denying new species is, is a foolish and is terrifying mistake. Hate crime. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we do need. We have a lot to answer for. Uh, I'll say. Uh, that in 2019, Arnold Schwarzenegger revealed that he was willing to star in the sequels to True Lies and Last Action Hero. Uh, Smart. And I would like to live in a world where those two movies exist. I'm not sure they would. I would argue the Fubar world kind of is the True Lies sequel in yeah, disguise. Yeah. But yeah. This movie getting a sequel now would be pretty great. And I would be curious to see like how far they could take it. And yeah. what if they got McTiernan to direct it? Like, cause he's like semi retired. I would love to see that. That would right. really make me. Everyone who worked on the movie talks about how they're like, this was a good movie. And I felt like we shot a good movie, but like the studio, like a lot of open interviews because the studio had control of the edit and everything like that. And it was marketed in a certain way. And there was a fast turnaround because they wanted to be Jurassic Park because that was coming out. And they knew that that was going to steal all of the thunder of everyone. So they were like, uh, let's just put this out real quick. And Schwarzenegger, McTiernan, Shane Black, I believe, all had interviews. were like, yeah, the studio fucked this movie up. This movie is a lot better than mm. what you see. That would, that's interesting. that would almost certainly not happen in a sequel. Uh, because like it would be a it's passion now a project, cult classic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah it's studios. There's a different interaction, exactly. Uh, and at between. this point, I feel like uh, every world that I've been in has been a lie. And uh, now that I understand <laughs> the truth, I'm gonna stay here and explore it, even if the truth <laughs> takes me to a different dimension, uh, mm-hmm. one where maybe I get to wear cool hats all the time and change my skin color. I think I would like to do. Blue is where oh, I'm yeah. going with that. Love to do that. Want you know, to be blue, like a Smurf. That's just like, get, get me all the way blue. Yeah, love <laughs> it. All like a blue man blue in man this group. That's what I would like. Blue window. Well, I got the yeah. Chamber of Commerce doing car wheels in my cocoa factory, so let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, very baked potato, for <laughs> it's patronizing us potato. several other times <laughs> in different episodes. <laughs> in this one. <laughs> It has nothing to do with this. I'm sorry, very baked potato. I'm sorry. He's just, oh, I'm so he's just sorry. on a loop. Oh, he's on a loop. He yeah. just gives credit to you every time I talk to him, and I don't know how to break it. Please send help. <laughs>